Thank you very much for that really warm reception. It's an honor and a privilege to be speaking to you here this evening. Before I go into the main points of my talk, I would like to reply to a few statements made by Minister Vivian Balakrishnan last night. Last night, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan put up a blog post with what he called some awkward questions for the SDP. I am actually quite pleased that he chose to engage us in a dialogue about matters that are important to Singaporeans rather than indulging in gutter politics of the past. I would actually be very pleased if he would engage us in a face-to-face -face debate about healthcare, about matters that count for Singaporeans just like the debate I had this afternoon with Minister Shanmugam. Firstly, Dr. Balakrishnan asked what specific taxes we propose to increase to fund greater investment in Singaporeans. You know, if he actually read through our economic policy, he would have seen that we want to increase the taxes on the top 1% of Singaporeans. And we want to increase the taxes to a level similar to what the tax rate was in the year 2000. Interestingly enough, not long after our SDP economic policy came out, DPM Taman introduced the Singapore budget of 2015, in which he talked about increasing taxes on the top 5% of income earners in Singapore. I wonder where he got the idea from. Thank you. So on the one hand, you've got Minister Balakrishnan who says that an increase in taxes on the top 1% will drive Singapore into bankruptcy. And then you've got DPM Taman who says increasing taxes on the top 5% will help fund social support for Singaporeans. It's very hard for us to figure out on which side they're talking. Secondly, Minister Balakrishnan asked about our proposal to rationalize the defense budget. Now, I enlisted in the Singapore Armed Forces in March 1983, when we still wore the Masek Green. I finally received my MR certificate earlier this year. In that span of 31 years, I've seen the SAF go from 1G to 2G to 3G. The SAF aims to be a lean, mean fighting machine. In a few years' time, who knows, we'll have cyborgs that are controlled by little computer gamers over here. So the SAF has got to be lean, mean, and effective. The SDP's National Healthcare Plan will take care of the peace, peacetime needs of SAF servicemen. And furthermore, we want to spend smart on the SAF. We don't want to overspend. What we want to do is to send, spend smart to review programs like the F-35, for example, a plane that reportedly cannot fly. There are many, many ways of reducing costs within the SAF. One example someone said is maybe get more generals to take part in elections. And thirdly, Minister Balakrishnan questions the benchmarking of our healthcare policy with the best healthcare programs in the world. We disagree with him. We think that Singaporeans deserve the best in the world. If we are going to benchmark our healthcare system, don't benchmark us against Rwanda or some other third world country, but rather with the best in the world. That has always been the case. I sincerely believe that Singaporeans are capable of being the best in the world. This has been shown by our students who outperform students all over the world in standardized tests. It has been shown by our Paralympic athletes and many of our small business people and skilled workers. 
there's no reason at all, Dr. Balakrishnan, why Singapore's healthcare system should not be benchmarked against the best in the world. And finally, I think that Minister Balakrishnan is mistaken about the causes of the Greek crisis. While these are complicated, we know that the Greeks spend less on healthcare than other OECD countries. In fact, the Greeks spend less on social support than the Scandinavian countries or even Germany. The roots of the Greek crisis are believed to be overspending. The SDP does not believe in uncontrolled over budget spending. We call for responsible accounting of public money for the good of the people. As you know, I'm a medical doctor and a professor at the university. I've been involved with the SDP first as an observer and then a year or two before the last GE as an active volunteer. The reason why I became involved with SDP was because I was becoming increasingly frustrated with what I saw every day in the public hospitals. We have some of the best doctors and nurses in the world. We have great allied health professionals and excellent infrastructure and resources. But unfortunately, our healthcare financing system is based on some very morally questionable assumptions. The PAP-led government does not appear to understand or doesn't want to understand that most of us don't want to get sick. If we had a choice, we would rather not get chemotherapy for cancer or go for open heart surgery. We don't choose to be born with congenital illness. We try very hard to look after our own health, but our genes, our environment is out of our control. The current healthcare system, which demands very heavy co-payments and deductibles, punishes people who are sick through no fault of their own. We need a new healthcare financing system. We need the SDP's national healthcare plan. With the SDP in parliament, we can ask the important questions to make sure that nobody is left behind in a healthcare system that the Prime Minister said must break even. No public healthcare system can break even. He's confused. Things that break even are businesses. Healthcare is not a business. <laughs> spending money on primary healthcare is spending smart. I do rounds on general medical wards uh, for a certain period of time every year. And almost every day, we admit someone who had a stroke. When I talk to these unfortunate people with a stroke, half of them will admit that they had high blood pressure 10 years ago or 5 years ago. Then I ask them, why don't you take medicine? The common answer is, I couldn't afford it, it was too expensive, uh, I didn't, couldn't get to see the doctor. And this is not just my own anecdotal experience. Professor Gerald Coe from NUS has documented this in many neighborhood health surveys done among low-income Singaporeans. It doesn't make sense not to treat high blood pressure and then later somebody gets a stroke and then they end up in hospital and you have to look after them. And it's a devastating complication. One of the health economists who helped with the SDP healthcare plan put it very well. Under the PAP, you underspend now, people get sick faster, and the costs go higher. Under the SDP's plan, we spend wisely now, patients stay healthier longer, and costs go down overall. So we favor spending on primary health care to prevent catastrophic complications later on. If any of you had a friend or relative who had a stroke, you know how terrible it can be. We have to invest in our people our people are our only natural resource. That is the difference between the PAP and the SDP. We view spending on education, healthcare, retrenchment insurance as investments in the people of Singapore, all of you, not welfare dished out by natural aristocrats to the undeserving masses. It is indeed a great honor to be here to speak on behalf of the SDP team at Marceling UT. 
This is truly a diverse and highly qualified team. Ms. Wong Suk Yi teaches at the university and has a PhD in creative writing. A gifted playwright, I have enjoyed sitting through plays that she has written. Although I have to admit that the plays don't only entertain you, they also make you think a little bit. And that is the genius of her writing. She writes to challenge us. So her plays are not just good stories, they make us think about the society we live in, about the, <clears throat> about the problems and the issues that real people faced. And that is the kind of thinking we need in Parliament, something to break free from the group thing that has paralyzed social development in Singapore. John Tan, who's going to speak after me, is a long-time dedicated politician who has sacrificed much to speak up for the average Singaporean. I first got to know him through volunteering with the SDP, and I know that he has a passion for social justice and equality. He will be prepared to speak up for those who are marginalized by policies which focus on profits over people, and he will be a highly effective voice in Parliament. A few weeks ago, we were on a walkabout in Marsling. A middle-aged woman came running after us, asking for more copies of the newsletter to pass to her friends and relatives. She said she really turned the the current system. John was part of the Tabole Tahan protest of some years back, and he still carries the conviction that we need to do something real about the burdens of high costs on the Singapore public. This time, with your help, he will be able to do something in Parliament. <laughs> Brian Lim, who just spoke, is the leader of the SDP ground operations team. I must say I've been tremendously impressed by his organizational abilities. He knows every block in the old Sembawang GRC area and has been leading house visits for years before the GRC was split into two for reasons that to this day are still not clear. You know, in Singapore, they can do that whenever they want to. My mother tells me she's lived in the same house for 30 years, but she's moved from Tanjong Paga to Momeng Kalang, now to Holland Bukit Timah. Amazing! <laughs> Brian is a very able administrator, and he is someone who would run a spectacularly efficient town council, in addition to being an effective voice in parliament for the people of Singapore. And finally, Dama Anhuri, someone who I came to know through the SDP's Malay policy paper launched a couple of years back. I got to know more in the last couple of weeks. He's a highly qualified professional who chose to pursue a career in social service. He worked with youth and helped develop and strengthen families across Singapore. He is someone who believes in volunteers. He is not someone who believes that you're either rich or corrupt if you want to help people without pay. He has strong convictions that all Singaporeans need to have equal opportunities for quality education so they can break out of the traps of generational poverty. What all four of them have in common, together with all the other 11 SDP candidates and all our friends and supporters here, is a belief in the people of Singapore. We are a mature people. We are an educated people. We can think for ourselves. We can handle our own money. Give us back our CPF at the age of 55. Thank you again for coming for this, the first of our rallies. We launched our campaign in January. We want to have a good, clean campaign. We've said this over and over again. A campaign which allows Singaporeans to make decisions on the issues to decide what kind of Singapore they want to have for themselves and for their children. It's not a campaign that dredges, degenerates into name calling or dredges up issues from the last century. The SDP will take the high road. We trust the people of Singapore to make a choice that is good for yourselves, for ourselves and for our children. We hope you will let us be your voice in Parliament. Thank you.